So we're going to start off by opening a new project. And the first thing that we're going to want to do is go to this little plus sign up here. And we're going to want to scroll down to color correction. And we're going to add this BW, which is black and white. You can control the strength, but we're going to leave it all the way up. So the next thing I want to add is a post effect called analog TV. Now this will give it the chromatic aberration around the edges, which is this pinky greeny stuff. And it's also gonna give distortion and noise, which we don't want. So if we just come over here to the resources and click on the analog TV in our inspector panel, which is this part here, we'll see all these settings that we can change. So I'm gonna bring the intensity of the noise all the way down because I don't want any and the distortion amount i'm just going to remove that one so it's zero and hit enter and then we've got no distortion and we've just got this nice pinky green around the edge but i don't want that much so i'm going to bring it down a little bit here i'm going to have about 120. then the next thing i'm going to want to add is another post effect and this one's all the way at the bottom and it's called VHS so it's got this line running down the screen I don't really want that so I'm going to click on VHS and then bring all of these band toggles down so now we've just got this outline and what's happening is the chromatic aberration moves it off to the side and it's moving just the outline that we made from the analog TV so if I remove that it would disappear so we're going to keep that ticked click on the VHS and then we're just going to move this I only want it a little bit off to the side so I'm going to go 0 0.3 and saturation we can bring that up if you like to make it a bit stronger and it also adds a little bit more brightness of the colors and areas that wasn't really showing up before. So I think I'm just going to have that on two. Okay, so that's kind of the main look of the effect. Now I'm going to show you how to add the face mask. Now we are going to need to make a texture for it. But before we get into that, we can just go to the add new and then scroll down to face mesh. And we're going to want to click on the face mesh here. And then in the inspector, it's got this face mesh default for the material. I actually don't want that. So I'm just going to click on it and do add new. And I want a diffuse. And I'm going to hit OK. So then I can actually just get that default one and delete it because we're not using it. And in this face mesh part, you'll see that it has different parts that you can tick. So I can fill the eyes or I can fill the eyes and then remove the face and just have the eyes filled. Um, eye corners. And you'll see here there's mouth and it does actually fill the mouth here when I do that. But there's a bit of a problem with it later on that you'll see. And I'll show you how to fix that as well. Um, but for now, we don't really need the eyes, even though it doesn't make a difference. I'm going to leave them unticked. So what we're going to want to do is go to this diffuse, which is the material connected to the face mesh. And you'll see that if we start changing things, it affects it. But I actually just want to leave it white. And I'm going to change the blend mode to normal. And I can actually just untick a lot of these because I don't really want to use them. Then 
The next part is to get the texture. So I'm just gonna jump out of Lens Studio and show you how to make the texture in, I use GIMP, it's like a free software similar to Photoshop, but you can use whatever you feel comfortable with. Okay, so when it comes to drawing the mask for the texture, I use this, it's a free asset that comes with Spark AR, that's the filter making software for Instagram. But I found that it works pretty perfectly with Lens Studio as well. I just had to drag it up a little bit. You'll see where this white space is. But I'll make this texture available, so look in the description. And this is the one that I made. So I'm just going to show you how I did that. And it's quite simple. You just want to add a transparent layer on top of the face. And then I use the pen tool and just draw some lines and then give them some curvature. And you just wanna, you only need to draw the first half and then the second half, you can just duplicate it and flip the image. So once you've got that, I'm just going to do stroke from path and it will make a brush stroke around that selection. And then I'm just going to get the fill tool. Whoops, that doesn't work. Okay, one second. All right, it's because it's got this open part. So if I just get the brush and just kind of fill that that we can just fill it, but you'll see that there's actually this little white space and we don't want that. So if we go select the whole alpha, yeah, you'll see it's picking up on these little bits that we don't want. So I'm just gonna control Z, control Z. So I don't wanna fill it. Instead of filling it, let's do, what's that called? Magic select or whatever, I don't know. So basically we just select the inside and you'll see it's not going all the way to the edge. So then I'm just gonna go select, uh, grow. Let's just do by three pixels. Now it's going fully inside it. We can just get a hard edge brush, bring the size up and fill it nicely like that. And zoom out again, select all, and then we can duplicate this layer and flip it horizontally and we've pretty much got the mask that we need apart from technically I did mess up this little bit with the brush but you get the point that's how you do it so once you've got your and that's actually pretty similar to the first one that I did but it really doesn't matter make it your own you might be thinking, oh, I wish he would have just uploaded the mask image and then we could have just used his, but it's better to have your own uh, because, you know, each, if every mask looks the same, it's a bit boring. So maybe you want to make this bit a little bit further closer to the ear, or maybe you want this bit to be less curved. So just make your own, make it personal, and you'll be a lot happier with it. Okay, so you'll see here I've dragged in my face mask. And I, I, you can either drag it in or you can go plus re, the plus sign on the resources and just plus from files and just locate it that way. But once you've got it into Lens Studio, then we just want to click on the diffuse. And you can either click here where it says texture and select it. Or you can drag drag it in that way. So you'll see now that this mouth, especially if we get an open mouth video, you'll see that it's not actually filling the mouth, even though we have got mouth geometry ticked. It doesn't seem to work. I'm not really too sure why, but I have figured out a workaround. So I'll show you that now. The way that we do it is you go to add new object and you're gonna wanna add a face mask. 
Now you'll see that the face mask is on top of our face mesh mask. It all gets a bit confusing when you're using the words mesh and mask so many times. Anyway, <laughs> you've got the, so this is the face mask and I'm just gonna drag that above. And now you'll see that it's gone behind. So, where it says texture here on the face mask, I'm gonna load up this same image. Now it's gonna look a bit strange. And I'm actually just gonna untick this head binding so that we can see just what's happening here. Now on this face mask, we're gonna wanna change the size because we only really need it over this little mouth part. And as long as it's covering the mouth, we are good. And I'm actually just gonna drag all of these guys and just pull them up. And pull these ones away to get those little lines as far away from the edges as possible. So here's the important part. You wanna tick no opacity texture and then tick draw mouth. And now you'll see that the mouth is fully covered. I'm just gonna get it as far away from the other parts as possible because it only needs to cover the mouth. So that should do. Now if we tick this head binding again and bring the mask back up, you'll see that when she opens her mouth, there is no hole, which is exactly what we want. But the mask looks a little bit separate because it hasn't got this edge detection kind of colored chromatic aberration going around it. It kind of looks a little bit separate and doesn't really feel integrated into the scene. So what I like to do is drag this head binding in between the black and white and the analog TV. And then you'll see you get the chromatic aberration around the edges of that as well. Okay, so that's almost everything. The last thing that I did was make it a little bit more contrasty. So to add contrast, I'm gonna go up to this add sign. And the object we wanna add now is going to be a screen image. Now, right, so what we wanna do is change the material. So we're just gonna go here and we're just gonna add and we're gonna do diffuse again. Now you'll see that it's not actually filling the whole screen. So to get it to fill the screen, I'm just gonna change all of the ones in the bounds section to two. And the reason why I do it like that is because when we change the view to laptop in case someone wants to use it on snap camera for their desktop for using for like zoom conference calls or something you want to make sure that it's covering the full screen even when it's landscape like that so you can test it on all different phone sizes and it fills oh actually it doesn't seem to fill the full screen on that so actually let's go three on these ones hmm it's still not doing it okay it's, it needs to be the sideways as well so three and three. So now it's fully covering all screen sizes. Nice. So let's just go back to iPhone 8. And in fact, let's name these because it's good to, to stay on top of naming it so it doesn't get too messy. So because this is the mask material, let's call it mask mat. And this is the contrast. So then we're gonna change the color to black and we don't need any of these other ones ticked. So I'm just gonna untick all of these. And then we're gonna to wanna to go over to the screen image and we're gonna change the blend mode to soft light. And you'll see now it's making everything a lot more contrasty. And if that's too dark, you can bring the alpha down. And I find a sweet spot is around sort of yeah, that's quite nice. So there you have it. That's pretty much it.
Thank <laughs> you.